Okay class, today we're in section 3.6, Model Direct Variation. 3.6, Model Direct Variation. Before, you wrote and graphed linear equations. Now, you will write and graph direct variation equations. Key vocabulary, direct variation, constant of variation. Two variables, x and y, show direct variation, provided y is equal to a times x, and a cannot equal zero. The non-zero number a is called the constant of variation, and y is said to vary directly with x. The equation y is equal to 5x is an example of direct variation, and the constant of variation is 5. The equation y is equal to x plus 5 is not an example of direct variation. Okay, now in some books and maybe on some tests, you'll find that y is equal to a times x, sometimes written as y is equal to k times x. But the a and the k mean the same thing. It means that the a is called the constant of variation and the k is called the constant of variation. Notice this equation, y is equal to a times x, is very similar to y is equal to mx plus b. But notice there's no b. So in other words, direct variation, right, has a slope. Notice, see how m is a slope? So slope, slope, slope. All this means slope. It's just that in the direct variation equation, there's no y-intercept. So direct variation equations always, when they graph, they always go through the origin. Always go through zero. Example 1. Identify direct variation equations. Tell whether the equation represents direct variation. If so, identify the constant of variation. A. 2x minus 3y is equal to 0. And then B. Negative x plus y is equal to 4. Solution. To tell whether an equation represents direct variation, try to rewrite the equation in the form y is equal to a times x. In other words, solve for, uh, solve for y and make sure you simplify. Okay, write the original equation. And here we got 2x minus 3y is equal to 0. Subtract 2x from each side. We should know how to do that by now because we're trying to solve for y. So we're going to say minus 2x here and minus 2x there. All right, we'll make our little line going across like that. We know we know how to do that by now. So now what's 2x minus 2x? That's 0, so that's gone. What am I left with? A negative 3y. On the other side, I have 0 minus 2x. That's going to a negative 2x. All right. So now I got a negative 3y is equal to a negative 2x. I'm trying to solve for y. So that means I got to get rid of that 3. This says 3 times y. So I'm going to say minus 3 here, dividing, and also divide by minus 3 there, or negative 3. Now, what's a negative 3 divided by a negative 3? That's a negative 1, so that's gone. I end up with just y. And then I got a negative 2 over a negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. And since we're working in algebra, we're going to leave this as a fraction, 2 thirds x. So we get y is equal to a negative 2 thirds x. So note, notice this has the form y equals a times x. So since this has the form of y is equal to a times x, it is indeed a direct variation equation. And what is the constant of variation? It's going to be that 2 over 3. It's in the same position as the a. All right, now we're going to repeat that again because the equation 2x minus 3y is equal to 0 can be rewritten in the form y is equal to a times x. It represents direct variation. And the constant of variation is 2 over 3 or just 2 thirds. All right, now let's look at equation B and see if it follows to be a direct variation equation. Once again, we need to solve for y and then simplify as much as we can. So I'm just going to get the y by itself. So to get this y by itself, we're going to do exactly what it says. Add x to each side. So to move that x, I got to put down a positive x here and a positive x there. 
draw my line, make sure everything stays separated. So a negative x, when combined with a positive x, that's gone. So I'm left with just y. Now I got 4 plus x. These terms are not alike. So all I can do is represent them, put in the x term first. So 4 plus x, I'm just going to write it down, x plus 4. All right, now, is this in the form y equals a times x? And the answer would be no. And once again, to repeat, because the equation negative x plus y is equal to 4 cannot be rewritten in the form y is equal to a times x. It does not represent direct variation. Direct variation graphs. Notice that a direct variation equation, y equals a times x, is a linear equation in slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b with m equaling a and b equaling 0. The graph of a direct variation equation is aligned with a slope of a and a y-intercept of 0. So, the line passes through the origin. That's what we mentioned to you earlier at the beginning of the lesson. Example 2. Graph direct variation equations. Graph the direct variation equation. y is equal to 2 thirds x and b is equal to a negative 3x. Solution a. Plot a point at the origin. The slope is equal to the constant of variation or 2 thirds. Find and plot a second point then draw a line through the points. So very simply put the first place you start with is a y-intercept of being 0 because there's no b-value. So that's where you start plotting that right there at 0. From there you count your slope. Your slope is 2 over 3 and we all know that slope is rise over run. So you go up 1, excuse me, you go up 2, 1, 2. That's your, that's your rise and you go over 3, 1, 2, 3. That's your run. Once again, start at the uh, uh, y-intercept being 0 because there's no b-value. And then you start counting your slope, rise over run, rise, one, two, run, one, two, three. Make your point right there, draw your line, and you are finished. All right, let's look at B. Plot a point at the origin. The slope is equal to the constant of variation, or negative three. Find and plot a second point, then draw a line through the point. So in other words, you're doing the same thing you did here, but you have to recognize in this case, the constant of variation and the slope, they're the same thing. So, but that's a negative 3 over what? Negative 3 over 1. That is a negative 3 over 1. Now, negative 3 over 1 can also be written as 3 over negative 1. You use whichever one is appropriate for the situation you're working in. Okay, so I have no intercept, or my intercept is 0, so I put that right there intercept being 0. My slope is a negative 3 over 1. Don't forget that. Negative 3 over 1 or 3 over negative 1. Either one of those is fine. Alright, so with that in mind then, I'm here. Negative 3 means 1, 2, 3 down and a positive 1 that way. 1, 2, 3 down and a positive 1 that way. I make my point, make my point, then draw my line. So once again, y-intercept is 0, slope is a negative 3 over 1, negative 3 over 1. So I'm right here and I go down 1, 2, 3 over 1 and then I have my line. Example 3. Write and use a direct variation equation. The graph of a direct variation equation is shown. A. Write the direct variation equation that is based on a graph. B. Find the value of y when x is 30. Solution. Because y varies directly with x, the equation has the form y is equal to a times x. Use the fact that y is equal to 2 when x is equal to a negative 1 to find a. So what they're saying is you can look on this graph, find any point you want, and plug it back into the direct variation equation form, and you can find out what a is. In other words, you can find out what the 
uh, constant variation is and don't forget the constant variation is also the slope all right so what they did was they picked this value here so they picked x being negative 1 y being 2 so in place of y they put 2 in place of x they put negative 1 and then from there they solve for a okay and to get a by itself you simply divide each side by negative 1 Remember, don't forget you're multiplying, so you do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, negative. Now, what's a negative 1 divided by a negative 1? That's a positive 1. So you're left with just a. And then what is 2 divided by a negative 1? That is a negative 2. So a is equal to a negative 2. So a direct variation equation that relates x and y is y is equal to a negative 2 times x. So all they did right here was they took this equation. We found what a is, so we put a back into the equation. So that's how we came out with y is equal to a negative 2, that's the a value, times x. That's your equation right there. That's all you want. All right, now, when x is 30, y is equal to a negative 2 times 30. So in place of x, we're going to put the number 30 there. So y is equal to a negative 2 times 30. What's a negative 2 times 30? That's going to be a negative 60. Um, I will write that right here for you here. y is equal to negative 2 times x. What do we put in place of x? 30. So y is equal to a negative 2 times 30, which is equal to a negative 60. Okay, now if you recall, we told you that you can pick any point on this line and plug it into the equation to come out with your constant of variation or your slope. All right, now the book they use uh, negative 1 and 2. Now let's pretend we pick this number right here. We pick this point right here, negative 2 and 4. x is negative 2, y is 4. All right, plug that in. y is equal to a times x. That's our direct variation equation. Our y value is 4. Our x value is negative 2. So now we have 4 is equal to a times a negative 2. All right. We want the a by itself. So that means we must get rid of the negative 2. So we're going to divide each side by a negative 2. Negative 2 here. Negative 2 here. Excuse me. We're going to divide each side by a negative 2. So negative 2 there and a negative 2 there. All right. 4 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2, that's a 1, so that cancels out. That's what that line is. It cancels out. That's not a plus sign. That cancels out. And we're left with just a. So a is equal to negative 2. So we came out with the exact same answer. All right, so if you pick this point right here, where x is 1 and y is a negative 2, once you plug in, you'll come out with the same answer.